Okay, we just finished the solar install on this Intec Willow RV, as you see behind me. And we're gonna give you a quick walkthrough. So we've got a total of 800 watts of solar. That's, as you can see, there's four 200 watt solar panels. The thing about the Intex is that the roof is made of fiberglass. So nothing can be screwed in as we normally do with panels. So all of these panels had to be adhered to the roof with a variety of sealants and tapes, lap sealant. We chose to go with an aluminum frame by bolting the solar panels to the aluminum. That way if the solar panels do happen to get damaged, tree branch falls on them or something, we do have the ability to replace the solar panels without having to tear them back off from the roof. Panels are set up in a parallel configuration. The nice part about the Intex is that they come with an existing PV glandular uh, fitting up here that's already got three sets of positive and negative PV fittings. All of the solar controls are accessible both inside and outside. This is the main control panel here. As you can see, we got our main kill switch, our circuit breaker switch for the 12 volt and 120 volt sides of the electronics. And then also what we did is the solar circuit is hardwired to the battery. So that way when you're towing the RV, if you wanna make sure that you got the kill switch turned off, all power off, you can still charge the batteries in the solar panels, through the solar panels. Um, when you do wanna kill all power to the solar, then you can just quickly trick the uh, breaker and turn that power off. Okay, as we head into the Intec RV, you can see these are really nice RVs. Turn on all the lights here. You can see they really put in a lot of quality work into these RVs. I love the fact that when you walk through them, you don't hear the floor creaking and cracking like you do on a lot of the other less expensive RVs. I also really like the blue accent lightings and all the cabinets. Okay, but back to our solar system. So all the controls to the solar system are right over here. You've got your main inverter on off switch. And then we've got a Renogy one core display up here. Looks like we're generating about 9.5 amps of solar right now. That's uh, unfortunately the tree above is shading out the panel. So we're not getting a whole lot right now. Not a great place to park for solar. Um, anyways, you can see your battery uh, level there is at 86% charging. And let's see, yeah, so our battery, if you want to get into more battery info, we can do that. Battery one, battery two. Um, and then you can see the solar charge controller. It's a 60 amp Rego charge controller. You can see it's generating about 247 watts power right there. And you can see that's still pretty accessible, even over here by the kitchen. Got a pretty good view. So that way when you're walking by, you can get a good glance and see what your battery level is at. The main controls for the RV from Intec are up here. Okay, so after removing the couch cushions and the plywood cover, you can access the control box. Uh, you can see our control box here has got a, a blue light on it that's motion activated. So if somebody does trip a breaker at night, as um, soon as uh, you lift the plywood panel, that light's going to come on to give you some light down here to see what you're doing. 
Then we've got our uh, 120 volt 30 amp main breaker. We've got our 12 volt DC 50 amp main breaker. And then we've got our primary kill switch. And all battery power, all lithium battery power does go through this kill switch. So this kill switch has to be on um, for any power to be going through the RV. And there is a second kill switch up here for the uh, uh, the main RV power center. This is the one provided by Intech. Okay, then we've got our 3000 watt Renji Rego inverter. And we've got on this one, we have a uh, Watchdog 30 amp uh, surge protector. If you'll notice this uh, inverter is raised because the compartment is so tight in these Intex. And with the uh, forward slanting front on the RVs, you get a little more uh, length here the higher we go. Okay, and then if we grab our key here, we can get inside the control box. Okay, and inside the control box here, we've got our Renegy Rego 60 amp charge controller. We do have a cooling fan in there in case that does get hot since we're in a fairly tight compartment. That fan only comes on when the uh, temperatures inside the control box um, reach the uh, threshold. And then we've got our main 400 amp fuse down here and all of our other fuses and circuit breakers and whatnot. There is a lot of uh, current going through this control box, so definitely use caution if you have to access the control box. And that's it on the control side. So we'll go and take a look at the batteries on the other side here in a second. Okay, after removing the couch cushions and also the plywood cover on the left side of the RV, we can take a look at our batteries. On this install, we've got two 200 amp hour uh, Renji Pro lithium batteries. And you can see the floor that had to get put in to level this out. So these batteries sit nice and tight, nice and flush with our uh, buckles here. So wire routing on these Intex is a little bit more difficult than some of the other RVs because the, the uh, Intex are made of aluminum, they're aluminum frame and subframe, and we can't drill through places we normally clan on the other RVs where they're primarily made of uh, plywood. So we had to route some of the wiring in areas we don't generally route it. Um, because of that, we had to use a lot of P-clamps, so you can see there's a P-clamp down there on the uh, 120 volt 10 gauge wiring. And then, you know, over here, we had to route the wiring up over the hot water heater. And you can see it kind of gets close to the corner of the hot water heater over there. So we had to put some uh, insulation, thermal insulation around the wiring. We had to do that in several areas. Not necessarily because the wiring is going to get burned. Um, I don't think it's going to get anywhere near hot enough for that to happen. But when electric wires get hot, the resistance increases, which means you're not getting as much amperage through the wiring. So wiring is a bit of a challenge on these Intex. We're able to keep the wiring positioned in places where it's gonna perform well. So again, I'm really impressed with these uh, Intex RVs. They're uh, made of really high quality. I really like the uh, all fiberglass roof, the aluminum frame, and uh, all the bells and whistles inside the RV. Blue accent lighting, I mean, the, uh, they're definitely worth the money. 
Um, so again, just to recap on the solar system, we've got our 800 watts of solar up here. Um, we showed you the 400 amp hours of lithium batteries inside and the 3000 watt inverter. Um, our standard kits come with uh, 400 watts of solar all the way up to 1200 watts of solar. Uh, batteries range from 200 amp hours up to 600 amp hours. And uh, all of our kits come standard with a 3000 watt inverter. Um, of course, we can uh, accommodate anything you want. If you're looking to add more batteries or more panels, we can go above that. That just goes beyond our standard kits. Um, depending on the number of people you have inside the RV, how many days you plan on boondocking, um, they all are great for boondocking. Okay, thanks for watching the video, and uh, hopefully you liked what you saw. And if you're interested in going solar, you can contact us at Great Lakes RV Solar Solutions. That's glrvsolar.com or 231-222-5788. At Great Lakes RV Solar Solutions, we believe that solar should be reliable, expandable, and easy to use, especially on the road or far in the woods, completely off-grid. Subscribe to get the most out of the RV system and check out our website for more solar installation kits. Thanks for watching.